In a media interview at the Financial Times Future of the Car Summit in May 2022, Musk said, I've probably been asked this question more than 100, 200 times about this, but I also want you to understand that using hydrogen as a means of energy storage is simply the stupidest idea ever. Musk has directly expressed his dissatisfaction and denial of hydrogen energy several times. He then also explained to reporters that the current efficiency of obtaining hydrogen through electrolysis is pathetically low and that most current hydrogen production is based on fossil fuels, which is not an environmentally friendly option. In fact, Musk's explanation is not unreasonable, it's mentioned hydrogen access problems, and storage, energy conversion, etc. are all problems. So hydrogen energy is really as Musk said useless, the first one to disagree with this statement of Musk's is. Definitely Toyota Motor Corporation. In May 2018, then Chinese Premier Li Keqiong visited Japan and, in addition to his regular activities, made a special trip to Sapporo in Hokkaido on May 11 to visit one of Toyota's local parts plants with then Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. The Sapporo plant mainly produces CVTs, but the star of the show that day was Toyota's hydrogen fuel cell vehicle Mirai which means future in Japanese, Mirai is a mass-produced hydrogen energy vehicle launched by Toyota at the end of 2014, and is considered to be the main product to succeed the hybrid Prius. Since the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle only emits water while driving, it is considered the ultimate solution for new energy vehicles. In 2014, Mirai was indeed a technical masterpiece, not only surpassing the then Model S, 470 km, in terms of range, 500 km, it was also far less expensive, $58,000, than the latter, $91,000, and far faster to refuel than to recharge. The hydrogen car was a highly competitive option, considering that Tesla was under question at the time. On October 21, 2015, Mirai went on sale in California specifically timed to coincide with the future 30 years later in the movie Back to the Future 2, but Mirai and hydrogen vehicles in general have fallen far short of Toyota's expectations. In 2018, Tesla, Shanghai, Company, Limited was established in Shanghai, and the Chinese-made Model 3 received its China green card in January of the following year. Throughout 2019, Tesla delivered 34,000 Model 3s in China and sold 730,000 pure trams in the Chinese market. And until this year, all hydrogen passenger car sales worldwide were less than 50,000 units. During the period when both technical routes were uncertain, many companies laid out hydrogen energy vehicles, Toyota and the Japanese were the fastest moving, the most aggressive, and the ones that fell the hardest later. The hydrogen energy vehicle is not only a big gamble for Toyota, but also for Japan. At that time, hydrogen was the most suitable technology route for Japan. Japan's domestic resources were extremely scarce, including lithium, nickel, and cobalt, the key materials for lithium batteries. Although hydrogen energy vehicles also need rare metals, the main consumption is electricity, and Japan's nuclear energy, which was being developed vigorously at that time, could solve this problem. In the Japanese government's vision, hydrogen will help Japan achieve energy autonomy. The Mirai is an expensive bet that it will either become the future of the auto industry or a technological trap that will devastate the Japanese auto industry. The Mirai went on sale at the end of 2014, and orders reached about 1,500 units in just one month. The Japanese government's subsidy policy is very aggressive with subsidies of up to 100,000 renminbi for a single vehicle. In 2017, Mirai sold nearly 2,000 units in the US, but has been declining year by year since then. 2019, South Korea's Hyundai's hydrogen energy vehicle Nexo was launched in the US, with annual sales of hundreds of units, considering that the much more expensive Tesla Model S sold more than 25,000 units in 2015. Mirai's results are somewhat insignificant, compared with pure trams, Mirai uses hydrogen with higher energy density and is very fast to refill. But the technical problems of hydrogen energy vehicles are obvious, the first is the conversion efficiency of hydrogen. From the electrolysis of water to hydrogen, to the compression and storage of hydrogen, to the conversion into electricity to drive the vehicle, the loss in this process is up to 72%, 
while the loss of lithium battery is only 20%. According to BMW, the energy efficiency of hydrogen vehicles is only half of that of pure trams. If steam reforming is used to make hydrogen, the raw material comes from petroleum, and a large amount of CO2 will be emitted, and hydrogen refueling stations are too expensive, Japan plans to build 160 to 1,000 hydrogen refueling stations by 2020 to 2030, and as of the end of 2021, 160 have been built, concentrated in major cities such as Tokyo, Osaka and Nagoya. The construction cost of hydrogen refueling stations in Japan is about 500 million yen, about $3.7 million, and the Japanese government will reimburse half of the construction cost until 2020, but the cost is still too high, for example, there must be enough open space around the hydrogen refueling station, bringing additional land costs. Because of the physical properties of hydrogen, hydrogen refueling stations must be made of a specific type of steel. The station supervisor must have experience working with hydrogen or other high-pressure gases and be responsible for keeping records of fuel purchases, a far cry from a self-service gas station. According to estimates, each hydrogen refueling station in Japan needs to serve 900 vehicles per year to be profitable. According to the Japanese government's original plan, the number of hydrogen energy vehicles in Japan will reach 40,000 in 2020, but in reality there are only 4,000 vehicles so there is little hope for hydrogen refueling stations to be profitable. I in the United States, hydrogen vehicles have encountered the same problem. The exploration of hydrogen energy in the US is actually very early. In 2004, Schwarzenegger, who is in charge of California, promoted the construction of hydrogen refueling stations during his term of office, but it started to decline again under the Obama administration. In 2015, Mirai entered the US market, and the construction of hydrogen refueling stations started again. But until now, there have been no more than 100 hydrogen refueling stations in the United States, and almost all of them are in California. Jerry Brown, who took over as governor of California in 2013, had set a goal of 100 by 2020, which has not yet been achieved either. An official BMW article says, We have a chicken or egg problem when it comes to hydrogen fuel cells. There is not enough density in the hydrogen refueling station network to drive mass production and sales of hydrogen energy vehicles. But without production and sales, there is no incentive for hydrogen station operators to expand. Pure trams seem to run into the same problem of charging post density, but even in the US, where EV penetration is very low, charging posts are being built much faster than hydrogen refueling stations. No matter how environmentally friendly the hydrogen energy vehicles themselves are, the hydrogen energy supply chain, made up of storage and transportation, is very fragile. Due to its physical properties, hydrogen must be stored at high pressure, but even then, the amount per shipment is very limited. Considering that the boiling point of hydrogen is minus 252.87 degrees Celsius, it is clearly unlikely that liquefied hydrogen can be transported on a large scale. Storage and transportation have been the biggest problems for the industrialization of hydrogen energy vehicles until now, compared to the local access to charging piles. As a result of various factors, even if hydrogen energy vehicles and hydrogen refueling stations can rely on financial subsidies to force low costs, the fragile supply chain makes the comprehensive costs remain high. In 2021, the cost of lithium-ion phosphate battery is about 0.65 yuan WH, and the cost of ternary lithium battery is 0.9 yuan WH, while the average cost of hydrogen fuel is still above 2 yuan WH. As for the cost of use, even after subsidies, the price is much higher than the cost of electricity. The PEMFC batteries used in hydrogen energy vehicles rely heavily on the rare metal platinum, again driving up the cost. To this day, many companies are exploring alternatives in materials and processes, but progress is scarce. Meanwhile, pure electric vehicles are penetrating by leaps and bounds. The pure electric route can win. On the one hand, the end product subsidies, on the other hand, lies in a large amount of capital invested in the upstream of the industry, giving birth to a large number of tens of billions of market value of components and supply chain companies, such as LG Chemical and Ningda Times. The problem with Mirai is that its supply chain is too closed. 
Almost all of Mirai's fuel cell system parts suppliers are from Japan, and many of them are even subsidiaries of Toyota. The automotive industry often has a complex customer certification process, and it takes basically two to three years to become a certified supplier. It is because the process is cumbersome, car companies' selected suppliers will not be easily changed, new business entry costs are very high. I in this case, except for a few car companies, Honda, Nissan, and Hyundai, almost no one is willing to gamble with Toyota. US car companies suspended large-scale research and development while Stephen Chu was at the helm of the Department of Energy, and European companies have tried small-scale collaborative research, but not many marketed products. Lacking an end product as a trailblazer. Investment in the hydrogen energy supply chain stopped short of government image engineering under the goal of carbon neutrality. Another fan of hydrogen vehicles is Hyundai whose hydrogen Nexo has been the top seller of hydrogen vehicles for three years in a row adding up to just under 15,000 units. The problem is the same in Korea, where the construction cost of hydrogen refueling stations is cheaper than in Japan, but also up to $2.1 million, which makes the Korean government subsidies seem like a drop in the bucket. South Korea had set a goal of 114 hydrogen refueling stations by 2020 but so far there are less than 100. In April 2019, Akio Toyoda came to China and gave a speech at Tsinghua University, becoming one of the few auto industry figures to have spoken at Tsinghua. In his speech, Akio Toyoda said a lot about his love for China and said that Toyota will launch 10 pure electric models in China by 2025. The Financial Times reported that Toyota refused China's technology for market offer in the 1980s giving China to VW for nothing. In the era of new energy vehicles, China has become a fertile ground for cultivating new technologies such as driving behavior and road data, which will be crucial for developing self-driving cars in the future. After massive investment guided by industrial policy, Chinese companies have withstood the test in several core aspects of the downstream of new energy vehicles, and Toyota does not have much of an advantage. After the gradual withdrawal of pure trams, China's subsidy direction has also shifted to hydrogen energy. The notice on the demonstration and application of fuel cell vehicles has made comprehensive adjustments to the hydrogen fuel cell subsidy, with a significant drop for light and medium trucks, a significant rise for heavy trucks, and the pilot launch of hydrogen energy heavy trucks in many places. I in the US. The strategic orientation is focused on the upstream segment with a clear goal to reduce the price of renewable, nuclear, and thermal energy conversion to make clean hydrogen energy by 80%. To $1 per kilogram, currently $5 per kilogram, by 2030 and to increase the production of clean hydrogen energy production by five times, both China and the United States have large enough single market size and sufficient fiscal power and private capital to support upstream and downstream innovators, concentrating on whichever route is easy to mature when faced with new technologies. But for economies with insufficient fiscal power, industrial policy often faces the difficulty of choosing one or the other, and each bet is still very risky not to mention multiple bets on multiple tracks this is Japan's dilemma, try pure electricity, shallow, development of hybrid, Europe and the United States ignore, bet on hydrogen energy, the future is far away. The automobile industry is the absolute pillar industry of Japan, accounting for 20% of manufacturing sales up and down, and driving 8.2% of employment in the upstream and downstream, hydrogen energy may be the future but I feel that it has little to do with Japan. That's all I have to share today, and I'll see you in the next video.